All right, in this video, let's look at some sounds that are produced at the alveolar ridge. That's right behind the teeth. Uh, so, uh, like before in the previous uh, video, uh, we're going to use sounds of English, mainly sounds of English, as examples. Uh, it may be that your language uses more alveolar, alveolar sounds than this. Uh, there are more. This is a lot of sounds, but there are more. Uh, it may use fewer. All right. Uh, for this video, we have eight sounds to go through. Uh, here you see them in black there. Uh, seven of them are from English, and then there's one that isn't in English, but I thought it was too good to miss out on. Uh, like with the other videos in this set, uh, I'll establish the IPA symbol for each sound, then give it its, uh, its phonetic description and identify some uh, English or other words that have this sound uh, in them. So let's get to it. Uh, the lowercase t represents the t sound. This is just what you might expect. Uh, remember those slashes indicating that uh, what's between them is in IPA. Um, so this sound is voiceless. Uh, that means there's no vibration at the voice box, remember. It's a stop, meaning that you completely block the air flowing through your mouth for a moment as you're producing this, and it's made at the alveolar ridge. Uh, some words in English that have this sound are tent, attach, and put. Uh, and uh, we looked in the previous video uh, at TH sounds. Um, they don't actually have a voiceless alveolar stop in them, so we don't use this character for them in phonetic transcription. Uh, for words like these and path, we use the symbols for the fricatives made at the teeth that we looked at in the previous video. Uh, T is a silent letter in some English words, like in castle and often. Some people say often, but other people say it without the T. Um, Right, so uh, that, those are the main things to look out for with T. Uh, with D, the lowercase d, this is the d sound. Uh, this sound is voiced, and otherwise it's like T. It's a stop, and it's made at the alveolar ridge. Okay, so this is the voiced version of voiceless T. Uh, this includes, uh, this is used in words like dipper, muddy, and lid. Okay. Uh, Letter T is generally well behaved in English. Uh, there's some weird things, but the main thing is it's kind of that first D in Wednesday usually isn't pronounced. Uh, I have known a few people who say Wednesday, but uh, usually it's Wednesday, right? Next sound up is the lowercase n for the n sound. Uh, this sound is voiced and it is nasal, meaning remember that air is flowing through the nose as you produce the n sound. That's why when you plug your nose, you get it starts to sound funny because it's not working right. Uh, and again, this like all the other ones in this video, it's made at the alveolar ridge. Uh, some words in English that have the N sound, new, knee, indigenous, uh, loon, when, uh, these all have the N sound in them. Uh, and rem remember there were sounds like uh, like an input, that N is sometimes pronounced more like an M uh, with the lips. Uh, the N in sing, it's pronounced further back in the mouth. We're going to get to that in an upcoming video. Uh, and like many other letters in English, sometimes N can just be silent, like in the word column. Okay, so the lowercase s in IPA, uh, it represents the s sound, which is voiceless. It's a fricative meaning air is flowing past the constriction in the vocal tract, but it's making a hiss, hissing sound as it goes, uh, and it's produced at the alveolar ridge. Uh, in English, it's normally spelled with an S or a C, or sometimes both, uh, so we see it in the word seen, the other word seen, uh, the word circle, the first C in circle is this sound, uh, listen, Pacific, pass, ice, Okay, uh, and more than many of the other sounds we've looked at so far, the S sound can be deceptive. So, for example, we have uh, some common words uh, like is, was, hers, and his. Uh, these are all spelled with S, but we actually pronounce them with a Z sound in English. Uh, also, uh, plurals, like when there's more than one of something, we use the S in the spelling. Uh, but many of them have a Z sound, like dogs, 
bees and foxes. Uh, and there's also some words that end S-E uh, where it's actually a Z sound like rise, pose, and confuse. Uh, there's an ending, the I's ending uh, is sometimes spelled with an S, sometimes with a Z. So if you spell it with a Z, you're probably already on the uh, right track for uh, the phonetic side, but words like computerize and motorize, uh, that's a Z sound at the end there as well. Uh, there's even times when the letter S in spelling represents some other sound, like the SH in mission and pressure, or the Z sound in confusion and abrasion. And finally, there are some examples of silent S, like uh, aisle. <clears throat> and we'll get to the SH spelling in the next video, so uh, stay tuned for that. Moving on, the next alveolar sound that we have is uh, lowercase z. That's the z sound, uh, which is voiced, and it's a fricative produced at the alveolar ridge. So it's like s. S is voiceless, z is voiced. Uh, it's normally spelled with a z, like in zoom and lazy or buzz, but there's a, a fair number of words uh, in English that use the s, like we were just talking about. Uh, like busy and is, use the S, but the sound is actually the Z sound. So if we were transcribing them phonetically, we'd be using the Z in the phonetic transcription. Uh, and it's pretty well behaved in English. It comes up silent in uh, the odd borrowed word from French, like rendezvous. Um, but otherwise, there isn't too much to worry. If you see Z in the spelling of an English word, it's usually a, a Z sound. Okay, the next sound, uh, lowercase r, represents the er sound. Uh, this sound is voiced, uh, and I'm calling it an r sound, uh, and it's produced at the alveolar ridge. There are several r sounds across the world's languages. Uh, the, technically, the technical term for r sounds is rhotic, uh, but for our purposes, calling it an r sound is just fine. Uh, in English, the, this sound is usually spelled, it's represented with an r, like in right, and wrist, and arm, and current, and per, and core. Um, and I can't think of a single word. You notice there's some double R's here. We talked about double R, double letters in an earlier video. Uh, we would transcribe all of these instances of R with a single uh, IPA R in the transcription. Um, <clears throat> right, and yeah, otherwise R is very well behaved, so we'll leave it there. The L sound, uh, so lowercase l represents l, the l sound. Uh, this sound is voiced, and I'm going to call it an l sound for now. We have another word that I'll get to in a second. Uh, it's produced at the alveolar ridge. The technical term here is lateral, and that's because for this sound and some others like it, we'll see another in a second, the air is actually going around the sides of the tongue instead of over the middle while you say it. So if you go l, the center of the tongue is touching the the top of the mouth the the at the alveolar ridge um and and the sides are open and you can feel air going around them uh and we spell it with an l like in english words uh, leap lump along wellness pull mile uh, and again double l's in the spelling don't necessarily mean double l's in the pronunciation uh there's not much out of order with l uh, in the spelling we do have some words where it's silent in the standard spelling like calm and palm <clears throat> okay now um this character um the the typographers the the linguists who like to talk about the the forms of the ipa letters this is called the belted l you can see it's a lowercase l and it has that little little belt around it that's hanging a bit loose uh, and this is this represents a sound we don't have in english but it is in the languages of enough SILDI students that I did want to include it here, and this is the sh sound. Uh, so this sound is voiceless, and this is a lateral fricative. So it's an L sound, but it's uh, a fricative like the s and z sounds, or f, right? Uh, and then this sound is also produced at the alveolar ridge. Uh, and like I said, it doesn't show up in, a, in English, 
but it is actually in the name of one of our northern languages, Clinchon. All right, so that TL uh, in Clinchon, they use that barred L to represent this sound. So it's not quite the same as the IPA character, but it does, uh, it is kind of reminiscent of it. Uh, all right, uh, and that's all the sounds. That's all the alveolar sounds for this video. Uh, and it should cover most of the alveolar sounds in any language that you're working with. Uh, some languages have one or two others. Um, that, that'll do us for now, though. Um, so here we go. These are the seven alveolar sounds of English, plus that extra L sound uh, that we just looked at. Uh, in the next video, we'll cover sounds produced at the hard palate. All right. Uh, and now I know these videos, they're pretty dense. I'm going through a lot of information, but one of the nice things about having a video is that you can, um, you can pause it, you can go back and, and re-listen if there's a sound that you particularly want to work with. Uh, so uh, thanks for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one.